Alright, hello all. This is going to be a Let's Play of Valley Without Wind. This is an indie game. Came out, I think, about a month ago, or maybe around there. I forget. Uh, it hasn't been out all that long, though. Um, it has, however, had quite a number of updates since then. And that's one of the reasons I waited a little while to do the Let's Play. I was waiting for certain features that I'd heard were going to be popping in soon, and they did. And a couple of important changes have happened that change a couple of the main mechanics, so I figured now might be a good time to start. Um, yeah, the game is a little bit like a randomly generated Metroidvania RPG with a little bit of schmuppiness in it, sort of. Uh, it's a platformer, it is all randomly generated, there's a lot of uh, spells and abilities and items to go searching for, a lot of bosses to beat, all sorts of fun. Uh, it's a complicated game, it's got a high learning curve, I'm going to do my best to try to, uh, I'm do my best to try to, uh, explain things as I go along. Uh, hopefully the recording doesn't come out too crap chastic because it will do that sometimes. Um, and first we're going to create a world. We're just going to call it LP World. And we've got various difficulty levels here. This is for the combat difficulty. We're going to set that to hero. This is for platforming difficulty. It affects how the areas generate and stuff like that. And this one doesn't seem to do a whole lot yet. I didn't really mess with that one. And we're just going to skip the intro mission. We're just going to get right into it. Uh, yeah, I think that should do. Okay, let's jump in. Now, first of all, we got to pick a character. Now, right now, we can only pick one type of character. There are a bunch of different types of characters, each representing people from different time shards. Um... You know, like you got these Ice Age future people, or you got like medieval guys, or, or like Stone Age guys, or medieval, or very said medieval, like Industrial Revolution, and you got one that's just a bunch of robots from the future. Uh, right now, we can only pick from Ice Age characters. They all have the same uh, special extra stats, but their base stats. Health Attack and Max Mana are all sort of randomly chosen. And we can re-roll here if I need to. Uh, let's see what we got here. I want someone that's just going to be, you know, a decent balance to start with. Um, I think it's going to be this guy. I don't think I need to re-roll here. So we're going to pick this guy. We're going to start with him. Now this is the settlement. This is where all the survivors gather and live, and this is where you can do a few uh, special things. You can heal up here, there's a store, you can use certain scrolls here, and we'll get to scrolls much later. Um, first things first, I gotta equip some spells. These are all the spells we start with, I'm not going to necessarily equip all of them. Let's see here, I don't remember exactly how I set this up. Also, bloody windows, I wish it would stop doing this. I know I've got, like, the bottom of this sort of obscured by Windows' own stupidity. Um, okay. Let's add in all the spells that I know I'm going to be using. I don't know if I need Fireball yet. Take the ball. Well, I'll put it in there anyway. I'm going to put most of these in there, even if I'm not going to use them right away. doesn't actually need to go in there, I think. Oh wait, no, it does. It does or it won't work. No, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, let's see here. No, I don't want to cast Creeping Death. Okay, that should get my controls exactly the way I want them. Let's see here. Put 
that there. This here. That's okay. And I am playing with the controller. Alright. First, we can collect some chance that are just lying around for who knows what reason. Here's some crates and platforms. Other stuff. Here's a dialogue box I don't need. Let's see. These are enchants. These are sort of like equipment like you might see in, you know, like Diablo and whatever. Um, oh, hey, we got one of these right away. That's good. Equip that. Don't need that. Don't need that. We want that. Well, no. Put that on first. And we want that. We will get more enchants later, like Diablo's equipment. They're all randomly generated. Let's see, crates and platforms. I'll be showing those soon enough. And I don't think there's anything else we really have to do here right now, or anything we even can do. I can get a few more starting enchants. Okay, we started with a few uh, useful things. That's going to help right away. That'll help later. That can be useful. Okay. And this can be useful. Alright. So the first thing we want to do is go have a look at the world map. We're going to do that. This is the world map. Each different, uh, different looking area represents a different time shard. This, uh, the snowy areas are Ice Age. Uh, this is, uh, Grasslands. I don't remember what time exactly it's from. Modern Century. This area is an abandoned town, desert, Skelebot junkyard, more town. This is the first continent. So there are about four, uh, shard types that don't show up here. Uh, it's all randomly generated like everything else. Now, these bright lit areas are normal areas. These are where we're going to be, mostly. These darker rainy areas are storm areas. Um, a big part of the theme of the game is pushing back the storm areas using these uh, windmill things that are called wind shelters. It's like a major gameplay mechanic. It fits in with the title of the game and everything. You can go into these zones, but you're going to take constant damage in them no matter what you do. So, we don't want to do that. The very first things I want to do is see what I need to upgrade my spells a little bit. Not so much to earn new spells, but to upgrade the ones I already have. Like this. This only needs one of these. That's not much. It doesn't need much. So, I can put these in my loot goals. So I can keep track of what I need and what I don't. And I have an idea as for what the first ones we're going to go for are. I want ball lightning before anything else. But, there's something else I would like to find a few of. Now the game has basically almost like a wiki site embedded within it. You can get info on anything you need, which is really nice. So I'm going to go to where to find stuff I want, supplies, and I am looking for moon lamps. I want moon lamps. I always forget where these are. Normal Ice Age, okay. So we're going to go to Normal Ice Age. Ice Age woods, plains, doesn't really matter. Not a mission zone, just a normal one. So, this is what the normal areas look like. I can fire at enemies here. A lot of different enemy types. My attacks are not very strong right now. And I can't get up there to grab that. Uh, enemies drop money. They also drop little health balls. There are no healing items in the game. The only way to do it is god damn it, I don't even want to know what just happened. I don't know, I don't care. Whatever. Hopefully that didn't screw the video up or I will be angry. Yeah, enemies drop money, they drop the little health balls, 
The health balls don't heal you for very much. It's usually like just a couple of points worth per enemy. And there are no healing items in the game. So you really want to be careful about taking hits. Health bar is sort of like an indicator of how long you can be on an expedition. Which is what the developers uh, are going for. So I'm going to, first of all, mob a few enemies real quick here. Uh, I want some of those shards. I don't need very many. And I'm going to check out these buildings. So, this is a building. I'm going to show something here. Um, I'm hoping to be able to enlarge this in editing. This is the dungeon map. It's a little funny looking, and it's kind of hard to get the hang of it first. Once you've got it, though, it makes perfect sense. We are here in this bottom room. This big long bar is just one room. The size of the of the bar has nothing to do with the size of the room. It's, we see up in the little mini map up here of the actual room we're in. This is actually a really small room. We can see almost the entire thing. The size of the bar just represents how many connections you can eventually get to from here. Like this, because going a level up, that's not one floor up. That's basically one step away from, or one door away from the actual exit. So like up here, that's two doors away from the actual exit. You'll always have to go at least two doors before you get to the exit. Um, and we've got an idea of, you know, different types of rooms. This dark band shows that I haven't been in here yet. This blue, dark blue one's a stairwell. This other one's a normal type rooms. The white bar means there's a secret passage here. And the characters will scout ahead a bit. You can always see exactly two levels past where you currently are. Um, there are... I think one or two character types that can scout further than that. We don't have them yet. We've just got Ice Age guys. But it really, the dungeon map, it's a little confusing at first. It's not that hard to learn. But it's like the perfect way of showing maps of the areas. We're going to be looking for goldish colored rooms, which are stashes. Because we need the items that are in those right now. So, first we're going to shoot this robot a few times. We'll be able to increase our power level pretty soon. Now if I stand in front of this door here, I can see that it points out which of these I'm going into. If I'm going into this hallway here, that's where I want to go. And the gray rooms, the dark rooms here, are destroyed rooms. They're basically wreckage. Uh, there's nothing in them. Uh, at all, ever. You can enter them, but there's no point. They're just sort of a part of the world. Because everything was wrecked. So, now we're gonna go here, and I can see that there is a... an exit to a stash room in here somewhere. Place some light orbs down. Play... Can't jump that high. And also, another neat mechanic of the game is that you can place platforms anywhere. As long as you have some, but you're probably always going to have some. Uh, you can drop down from them, jump on them. They're very easy to use, very useful. And you can place crates, and there's other deployable items. Now, this goes to the stash room, which is the bedroom, I guess. Doesn't matter what type it is. Not seeing the exact sort of item I came for here. But I'm getting some shards, which I want. Now, we're looking for stash rooms, so I don't really need to go in the normal ones. There's no point in trying to explore 100% of everything in this game. You know, I know completionists are going to hate that idea, but it's totally futile to do it, and all you're going to do is waste time. Part of the game is deciding, you know, where you should explore and where you should ignore. And that's part of the gameplay. It's actually a very interesting way of doing things. Okay, there's another stash room up this way. That's right, I should be using fire on those guys. Most enemies have a weakness. Some have resistances. I'm gonna shoot this robot. Robots are weak against uh, air attacks, so that's why I'm using lightning ball. This is the stash room. Here's a robot. Okay. Now, 
there's something else here. It looks like a secret mission. I'm gonna have a look at it. That was the wrong door. It's a, it's another goldish color. It's a little different shade though, and that denotes secret missions. We'll get into the mission soon, quite soon actually. This one, free fall mission. I might do this because I know I'm gonna need these. I don't have to do it right this second. First thing to do, um, and this thing here, this lets us warp out of the building. So we're gonna do that. But I actually want to then jump right back in from the main entrance and check up this stairwell here. I still want these moon lamps. I really, really want these moon lamps. So, not to mention more shards. Consciousness shards are money. They let us buy things. They're pretty important. Why do I keep hitting that with thunder? I need to hit it with fire. Oh, and I missed my double jump already. We'll get double jump soon enough. Yeah, see, that kills those much faster. Okay, this is the stash worm. These icicle guys are easy. They're everywhere early on. That thing I just picked up is an enchant charge. Um, those are how you get enchants, which are these, the equipment-like things. Every time you collect one, this percentage goes up. And when it hits 100%, you get a new enchant. A very interesting way of uh, getting equipment-type items. Interesting indeed. Now, I think I'm going to check out one more building if there's one here that's easy to get to. Well, actually, no, we're, not. we're going to do something else first. We've gotten a few enchant charges. Or, not enchant charges, we've gotten a few shards. We don't have that many. But we've gotten enough to do something important. So, let's go back here. Oops. Now this opal stone here is the store, um, and what we're looking for is the health mana attack enchants that go in these slots. These enchants are special, you don't find these anywhere, you have to only buy them from the store. Each character gets exactly 10 enchant points to be spent here. These enchants basically let you divide those points up how you want. Each point increases one of these three stats, and you can create different character builds by doing that. Normal enchants, you can switch out anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. These three, you can only switch out in safe zones, which are like the settlement and war portals, and you can only do it if you're at full health. Right now, we just need to get a basic starting setup going. So I'm going to... Let me think of how I want to do this. We're going to get... Let's go for three for health. Two for mana, because I don't really need that much right now. And the remaining five I'm going to be putting into attack. To get a good amount of uh, damage out of this guy. So, we just stick these in here, and stats immediately change. So this guy is set up exactly as I want him to, it's that simple. It used to be done with upgrade stones, those are removed in favor of this much better system. Hey, I actually have a few moon lamps. I'm gonna go see if I can't get a couple more though first. It's not like it takes a And I can clobber some more Ice Age enemies along the way. get some more enchant charges. I definitely want more of those. I don't have, like, uh, yeah, no, uh, no double jump or anything like that. I want that. That's a useful ability. Um, yeah, now, 
platforms can only be placed where there's an actual background wall, so that's why they drop a bit. And we can attack background objects like these trees, only with certain spells. Mana regenerates over time. It actually regenerates really fast. Some crates so I can get over this lumpy thing. There's all the robots. There's the robots. Yeah, see, so now we're doing a lot more damage. So, as I said though, my first goal is get some moon lamps. I don't need that many of them, but. I still keep hitting that with them. Alright. Oh, come on. Where's a building? Buildings. I need buildings. Buildings. That's what. Get you. Well, for right now, I'm mostly going to be using the ball lightning spell. But I'm going to actually be getting a lot of spells. And I'm going to be using pretty much all of them. There are only a couple of spells in the game that I really haven't found a good use for yet. Um, and I'm playing at a fairly high difficulty, so... More spells are more useful in this... Uh, particular difficulty, and with my uh, own personal play style. Bugger. Okay, well, that's annoying. So, I fell down here for some reason. And the light balls I place don't uh, illuminate a very large area, but they float, and they just last indefinitely, so I don't have to worry about replacing them. But what I need is just to get over here. Come on, buildings. I need buildings. Ooh. Right, here's one. Okay, so I can see on the mini map here there's a stash room that I can get to right from this room. That's a good start. Shoot this jerk. And this is the room I want. Come on, moon lamps. I want some. And I got some bear traps. I don't need bear traps yet. But I am going to want them later. Let's see here. Uh, this doesn't go anywhere interesting. Uh, yeah. I need to go in there. As we can see, scouted out that that just goes into another normal room and then dead end. We're gonna go up this stairwell instead. take you up exactly one level from the room I'm in. Like this bar, it connects to the rooms that are directly above and touching it. So we can go into this one, this one, but not this one via these doors. Now, what the game calls, uh, well, it's calling them side links now. I keep calling them secret passages. Side links can break that rule. They can go, like, all over the place. We can see there's more side link rooms up here, so chances are this, which I bet is the side link. Yeah, see that skips this, takes me up there. Um, it's not the way I want to go, though. I want to go in this door so I can go to the stash room. Which is right here. There's something down here, though. So I'm going to grab that and shoot this jerk. Hey! Alright, in this room. Here's a robot. Oops. Okay. Oh, come on! I know what I need. Moon lamps. Moon lamps. Did you give me moon lamps? I'm gonna make sure there's nothing past there. Nope. Okay, back in the stairwell. 
Nope. There are no more... Uh, no more caches or stashes in here at all. And that blue spinny thing was a warp zone. We will see those a little later. They're important. They're important and useful. There it... Stupid lack of double jump. I hate double jump. Want. Now, though, I'm just trying to find these buildings. D Give me that. It's money. I need it. Okay. Let's check out just one more building for now. Just one. Lights down. Here. This is one of the stash rooms. Over that guy. Still not the lamps. Drat! Okay. Go in this other stash. Here's a robot. Smash the last bell. Here's some crates. We've almost got enough enchants, that's good. Let's see if there's an enchant charge in here. Might be. Oh, I know. There's one. Alright. Well, that wasn't a stash room, it was usually at least, like, some small in most rooms. Usually they're not worth bothering with, though. Let's see if there's more stuff in here. Until you move or take an action, it lets you, you know, scout out the area, make sure you didn't like pop out on a monster or something stupid like that. This is not what we want. Come on, I know what I need. That's actually a good find. Not what I wanted, but it'll do. I 
orange and I'm playing this with a controller. My aiming and stuff seem a little weird, that's why. You can use keyboard and mouse, aim with the mouse and stuff like that. I'm using a controller, I'm using the lock-on system. That alters the way I have to aim a bit. Ow. Where did that even get me? I it hit me. That's not. Okay, we have gotten a new enchant. Let's have a look at it. Let's get the dang thing to stop doing that. Air power enchant. Gives me 40% more air power. That's something I definitely want. So we'll equip that. Alright. Okay, I have some moon lamps. I have enough to do what I want to do. Right now, though, we're gonna get the heck out of here. Now, warp gates. They let us warp to any area on the maps, which includes, you know, the buildings and such. Those have gates as well. Any area that has these little blinky pink things it signifies that there is a gate there. So we can work, warp back to the area right by the entrance. And just leave that very convenient here, some jerks. And the enemies we're going to meet early on are not too tough. As we go further into the game, we're going to be actually unlocking more difficult monsters and stuff like that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What was I doing? Let's see here. What I want... I want to buy enchants, I think. Let's see. Head slot enchants. Yeah. I want... Some sort of jump enchant. So we're going to see what this gives me. So give me a random enchant of this type. Some of these are pretty pricey. A lot of the shop items are pricey. Yes. That is not double jump, but it'll at least let me jump higher for now. So that'll have to do. Okay. Um. Oh boy, okay. This is probably a good place to stop for this first video. Um, next time we will do a mission and we will journey into some caverns to get our first spell powered up. So, hope to see you next time.